This is Mr Omar and I just want to talk you through how you do some of these tasks for the deep reading task. The first thing that you need to do is your overview and most of you have done this by this stage. The book that I'm using for my examples is called Bureau of Mysteries and the Mechanomancers. This is a second book in a series or maybe there's just going to be two books because it's the most recent one by a Melbourne author called H.J. Harper. I like this book, but it's probably a bit too basic for most of you. But I did notice some people reading Captain Underpants books and so forth. And while they're fine for light entertainment, you should be trying to step, step up to something at least as difficult of Bureau, as Bureau of Mysteries. Um, it's probably really a grade four or five book. But, you know, some of you might find that it's your reading level at the moment and some of you need to be pushing yourself a lot further than that. So let's look at what we're actually going to put in the document. So here we are. First thing I need to put in is, of course, the name of the reader, which is me. So I type my name in. Uh, the next thing I do, of course, is put in the name of the text. So I've just got that off the front cover of the book. Uh, the name of the author, as I said, is H.J. Harper. Um, some people actually, not some, I'm not sure if many authors do this or if it's just some, but using your initials instead of your first name. So I might be M.S. O'Mara rather than Mark O'Mara. Some authors do that, but just write down whatever the author calls themselves. How many pages are there in the text? This is quite a short book. It's only 302 pages. As for the central characters, if I was doing this from just starting to read the book, which is what you're doing in class, I'd only be able to list George Feather and Imp because they're the only characters that I'm going to know about at this stage. I will probably come back and add major characters as I go along because I know that Tinkerton's coming along and he's a major character and so is Lexica. But when I'm first reading the book, I don't know this, so I just put in the characters I know about. As for the year that it's set in, this is sometimes really easy. Some books will just say in the first chapter, you know, it was 1945 and the war had just ended. Or, you know, I was listening to the radio and they were playing the top hits of 1982 or something. But this book is in a genre called um, steampunk. And the way that steampunk works is it's kind of like 100 years ago, but with all this extra technology. So it's deliberately in an ambiguous time frame. So I'll put that information in here. Just because it's unclear doesn't mean I can't write it. It just means I write in here that it's unclear. And the place that this is set is that this is actually set in a fictional place called Obscuria. So that's what I do. I just go through and get the basic information out of the book and I put it in my overview. And that's what you should be doing too.